Last month, my AI businesses made me $480,000. And this month, they're on track to do even more. And two years ago, those same businesses were making me a total of $0 per month. So in this video, I wanted to reveal the exact 13 AI tools that I've used to take my business from zero to $480,000 per month in just two years. So whether you're an established business owner looking to scale your business while doing less work and getting AI to do more of the legwork for you, or you're an aspiring entrepreneur who's ready to start building your empire, these are the exact AI tools that I'd wish I'd been using from day one. And by the way, None of these uh, sponsored tools. I haven't been paid to promote these. I, I genuinely just want to put you guys onto some game as to what's really helped me in my business. So none of these are sponsored. There's not going to be any affiliate links. I don't need to make money from affiliate links or any of that stuff. So I hope that just to clarify that before we move any further. So to keep things nice and simple, I'm going to be breaking this video up into four different sections and they're going to be based around the tools that I use for the different businesses that I run. So if you're new to the channel and don't know who I am or, or what I do, uh, my name is Liam Motley and I run three different AI businesses and have been for the past two years. And the first one is Morningside AI, my AI automation agency, where we build and sell AI solutions to businesses. Secondly, I have my education business, the AAA Accelerator, and also my free school community. Um, and I also have my AI SaaS, Agentive, where we uh, help people to build and sell AI agents uh, without needing to know how to code. So those are my three main businesses. But of course, there's also another big chunk in the area that is content production, which is kind of the engine that powers all of my businesses. Making videos like this is, of course, part of that. So uh, I'm going to be revealing the exact tools that I use on the content side, which I think you guys are going to be very interested to hear with really innovated a lot on that side um, over the past six months and then all the other businesses that I run the different tools that I'm using there so that's a bit of a breakdown let's get stuck into it okay so starting off with Morningside AI there are four different tools that I've well, actually there's a lot more that we use but I've tried to pick the four most important ones um, to feature in this so if you guys want to integrate them into your own AI automation agency uh, but to kick things off tool number one is called prompt Metheus, and this has been a uh, a fairly well-guarded secret of myself and the team at Morningside for our prompt engineering process. Uh, Promptometheus is a prompt IDE, uh, like an integrated development environment, just like you have if you're familiar with VS Code um, and, and other ones like Curse, which I'm about to go into. Uh, when you are uh, developing and building software, you have a software on your computer that's called an IDE or an integrated development environment that basically combines all the, all the necessary tools to allow you to be as efficient as possible when programming. So you've got your terminal, you've got your different file management, um, everything that you need to uh, build software is integrated into one one software. So what Promptmetheus does for prompt engineering, which I think is when I first played around with it, I was like, man, this is fantastic because uh, it takes the prompt engineering process and makes it like an engineering process. And we were able to build at Morningside a very robust uh, process for uh, prompt engineering that I can sort of pass out to my team and make sure that they're able to to write prompts that are all online because you'll notice with an agency as you start to add more and more devs in everyone's got their own way of doing prompt engineering maybe they just randomly throw stuff at the wall and see what sticks um, or they they take a very clinical approach but everyone can be running in the different directions and so what prompt Metheus allowed us to do is for me to come in and create our prompt engineering process and to pass it off to our devs so that everyone and we can consistently deliver high quality prompts without uh, new devs coming in and not really knowing how we do things at Morningside AI. So um, I can do a whole video on this. I actually have, have planned one, but I, I never really got around to, to filming it. Um, where I break down the entire prompt engineering process we use at Morningside AI to make sure that we get quick deliveries and we get satisfactory results even when we're onboarding new devs. So um, really awesome tool and I highly recommend you guys check it out because in my experience, Prompt Metheus allows you to really chunk the prompt into different sections, rapidly test it and grade the outputs. And yeah, I, I should probably do a whole video on it at some point, but comment down below if you want me to do that. So Prompt Metheus, that is number one, a Prompt Engineering IDE. Now the second tool is called Cursor, and you guys may have heard some of the hype that's been buzzing around in the development world about Cursor. But basically, it's an AI enhanced code editor. So you can use natural language to uh, rapidly speed up your, your coding process and, and workflow. So this has been, as I mean, as someone who's is paying the bills and paying, <laughs> paying developers to, to work on projects, if I can make them work two to three times faster by allowing them to use tools like Cursor to write the code faster and, and test it and analyze it much better, then that's something that I very much want to have included in my business. So Cursor, it's allowed our developers to do more with less um, and be a lot more productive. So it's basically mandatory. By this point, the majority of developers in the AI space are using Cursor because it's so good. Um, and it's just been a really massive help for us to, to get more done in less time um, with our development team. And the exciting thing about Cursor and other AI assisted development 
programs is that it's really just getting started and these developers are going to continue to get more and more tools baked into programs like Cursor and other uh, that allow them to do more with less uh, and, and be extremely productive, far more than they, than they were over the past few years. Tool number three is an AI voice agent platform called Vappy and it allows us at Morningside AI to not only build things for our clients, I, I tried to make this entire list of, uh, of softwares and tools that I use not necessarily related to product and, and service delivery for our clients and um, that's an entirely different video. Uh, but these are specifically tools that we use in our kind of operations to allow us to do more with less. So uh, Vappy, while we do use it for client deliveries um, for certain voice agent use cases, uh, it is more so for us on the HR side when we're hiring, um, we do a lot of hiring. And when you put up a job post on something like LinkedIn and then you put a bit of spend behind it and you pay some money to LinkedIn to try get more applicants, you can have one to 2,000 people who apply for that role. And that's, that's something that we don't have time to work through manually and find the best applicants. So what we do is we uh, send out a, a phone number to them and it's connected to a voice agent on Vappy and they basically get to call up at their own time and at their own leisure and answer a bunch of questions and then we analyze that transcript and use that to shortlist applicants and then we go and actually book and, and interviews with them after so that's a cool little use case for hr and for hiring um, that we use at morningside ai just so that i mean talent is so important for especially in this space at the moment finding the best ai development talent and, uh, and in other areas so that's been really helpful for us so that we can get as many applicants through the door and then not have to shortlist them all ourselves and the final tool for morningside ai is our fourth tool which is google gemini deep research and this is one that we've started using very recently um, for our consulting side of the business so we've recently set up our morningside ai consulting division and we've done a our first project was an eight-week ai audit for a 200 million dollar a year steel company based here in new zealand and that was a, a really big success, success for us and uh, as we've scaled up that consulting team we've got five people working for us now on that side and as we continue to expand that this year, there's been a lot of really cool tools like uh, Google Gemini Deep Research, which has come out. And I'm not sure if you guys have a chance to play around with that yet, but basically it can go and research using Google's incredible search capabilities, like 160 different articles and like pull those all in. It might take five or 10 minutes, but you give it a say like, can you write me a report on the productivity trends in New Zealand uh, within the XYZ industry? And it will go and research like hundreds and hundreds of, of, uh, of websites. And then we'll use that and just repeatedly go over and over and over using multi-step reasoning, similar to the O1 model that we've seen from OpenAI, where it goes to multi-steps of reasoning and it's kind of chain of thought and looking back and forth and, and breaking things down step by step. And then eventually it gives you this huge report which you can immediately put into Google Docs. Um, and that's been great for us to rapidly do research instead of having to have a whole bunch of people spending time going and finding all of this information. Um, for consulting use case, it's been very helpful for us to be able to just bang in a question and let this deep research agent go out and find all this information and give it back to us in a nice report exactly how we need it to, to provide value to our clients. So that's been a massive help for us on the consulting side. Now getting into the second section of this video, breaking down the tools used in my education business, the AAA Accelerator and my free school community as well. Um, so the first tool which you guys will be familiar with is Fireflies, which is basically just a, uh, a call recording software. But Fireflies also has a lot of great AI features built into it that allows you to rapidly analyze and, and break down the different call recordings. So for us taking a lot of call volume, uh, it's really important for us to keep tabs on what's happening and all of the calls going on um, in the business. And being able to break that down and analyze, okay, what are the objections? What are the thing, reasons people are, are not buying, etc. So that's been an incredibly helpful tool. And, and my, my sales manager is constantly just going through the recordings on Fireflies. And it saved them so much time by not having to sit there and listen to a 45 minute recording and then another one, and then another one. You can very quickly skim through that and it's got some incredible tools. So if you have any kind of sales team and you want to be able to analyze those call recordings much faster, highly recommend plugging in Fireflies and then getting your sales manager to have a process for going through those each day. The other AI tool that we use extensively at my education business is Airtable AI. I mean, if you may be familiar with Airtable um, and they've recently released, I think, late last year, their AI features, which have been um, really, really helpful for us overall, um, being able to run AI columns and do things like uh, extracting information, being like reformatting and, and putting them into label columns, etc. So this has been particularly helpful for us in two different ways. Firstly, in our solutions database, which is a, a database of all the best AI solutions that are selling in the, in the, in the market currently. And that breaks down the things like their price, um, things like the, the niche that they're in. There's a lot of classification that I have to do to, or in order to make that data actually useful. So we, as, as part of our value to our members, is pull in as much information as we can on what's actually working and selling. And then formatting that all into different categories and making it easy to consume that information um, has all been done through Airtable AI. And that's been uh, extremely, extremely valuable for us in that case. And another way we're using this Airtable AI feature is for 
uh, on mass analysis of transcripts and tagging and classification and stuff like that. So Fireflies is good for the individual core recording. We can go through and rapidly dig through and figure out what went on in the call. That's great for individual analysis. But if you're looking to have all of your calls broken down and classified and tagged, Airtable AI has been much more useful for us in that because you can write a little prompt, like, okay, take this transcript and tell me uh, roughly what ICP they fit into or like what category or persona did they fit into? Okay, what objections came up during the call? You can do a lot of cool tagging and classification and extracting general notes on the call can be very helpful because you can write a prompt once and click generate and it'll just go through the entire list. So Airtable AI has been really helpful for that kind of on mass analysis of transcripts and picking out key things that we want to do with labels and, and categories and stuff like that. The third section of this video is on the AI tools used to build and manage my AI SaaS Agentive. Um, and this is actually pretty simple because aside from Cursor, which I've already mentioned for our development team to use in order to build Agentive, um, and also the projects at Morningside, the main AI tool that we use for Agentive is Agentive itself. So we use an Agentive um, web chat widget on Agentive for customer support. So aside from using Cursor for development, the main AI tool we're using to help manage the SaaS um, is Agentive itself, where you can go on and build it uh, without coding. This is kind of the whole point of the app is that you can go on there and without coding, use the uh, use our interface to create an AI agent and put it on your website. And you can put it on WhatsApp and Telegram and other platforms as well. So we've been using Agentive for our customer support and that hooks directly into our Slack for notifications and stuff like that. The fourth and final part of this video is focused on the AI tools used in my content creation process, which is something that I know a lot of you are very interested in learning more about. So I'm really excited to be sharing the exact tools that I'm using in my workflow in order to grow my channel so fast and to consistently put out content on, uh, on multiple platforms. So the first one is one that probably won't shock you that much and that's Claude. So Claude is, if you're not familiar, uh, Anthropic's kind of competitor to ChatGPT. And uh, many of you have probably noticed as well that Claude's writing is, is much better than, than ChatGPT's. ChatGPT can be very good for um, analysis and using code interpreter and, and image generation and, and web search and stuff like that. But Claude has been, at least in my experience, much, much better at writing. So when I'm trying to uh, tighten up a hook or, or, or an introduction for a video, or I'm trying to better structure my ideas, Claude is my go-to writing assistant. And I use it all the time, all the time for throwing in, hey, like, here's this cool YouTube video I found, here's this cool interview I found, throw it all in as, as context, and then I get to write from there and say, hey, let's let's pluck these different ideas and, and concepts out of this, and then can you give me a plan and, and sort of bake it into something, and then let's expand out. So overall, Claude is one of the things that I use most often in my workflow. The second AI tool that I use in my content workflow is Perplexity. This is one that I've been picking up more recently, and I, I don't know why I wasn't using it more earlier, but <laughs> I use it particularly in my research and, and, uh, and writing process for YouTube videos and other content that I make. Um, in order to rapidly find uh, research and, and stats to back things up and things like quotes, etc. And this is particularly important because you guys will realize as you start to create content, anyone can just have a take on something like it, particularly if you're not an established person with like some incredible results that give you authority behind and credibility behind the things that you say. You can't just make claims and say stuff. People will just call you out of bullshit. And then people have called me out of bullshit earlier in my, in my uh, YouTube career when I would just kind of be making statements and stuff. And so like, well, how do you know that? And so that's really forced me to be, okay, well, how do I know that? And come up with research and, and provide quotes and pulling in other people's authority and credibility and research and work that they've done in order to, to back up the points that you make. And that's so important. You guys will see in basically, I'm always using quotes. I'm always using stats and research. And this is what really separates the 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 creator you've never heard of from the guys who do well is because they can back up their points with research. So perplexity has been great for me because I can say, hey, can you please find me some uh, research related to this assist or some stats? And what it does, it's basically like ChatGPT, but connected to the internet much better. Um, it's fairly similar to, to Google Gemini Deep Research now. Um, they've got a bit of competition there. Uh, but perplexity is great because it will find all of this information on the internet and then provide references as well. So I can I can get those exact sources and use them in my, in my writing. The third AI tool in my content workflow is called Recraft. Now Recraft is another new one that we've added pretty recently, but it's been very helpful for us in generating consistent uh, images and icons for videos. So even in this video you're watching right now, I'm not sure if I'll have some icons popping up, but if we do, they're definitely made on Recraft. This has been really helpful for us to uh, increase the production quality of our video without having to 
bring on a, a more people into the team. So we can very rapidly spin up new icons, just literally write in a prompt and it'll do it in our style, which has been very helpful for us and improving the quality of our content consistently. It can be pretty tricky to get working correctly. So again, if you guys want me to do a deep dive on any of the tools I've covered here, then just comment down below and I'll, I'll see if I can get a video whipped up for you. So uh, the fourth tool is called Runway. And you guys may have heard of this. It's similar to Sora, OpenAI Sora, which has just been released uh, for AI video generation. But Runway is great for uh, generating B-roll. A significant part of making an engaging YouTube video that isn't just me standing here waving my hands around um, is having B-roll. And that's when, say, we'll do it right now, boom, cuts a B-roll. This is what you call B-roll. This is when there's the stuff that's not the A-roll. So the A-roll is me standing in front of the camera. The B-roll is stuff that you chop in and out of and kind of put over um, to keep things interesting and to mix it up. So when I'm talking about uh, counting all this money and then you can put B-roll about counting this money. So the, the tricky thing about B-roll is that you have to go out and find it, right? You have to either go to stock footage sites, you have to go to, uh, we've been using a lot of movie clips in my videos recently because it's more kind of relatable and, and recognizable. Um, or you need to go and find like articles and, and all sorts of stuff. It can take quite a long time and speeding up this B-roll process using Runway has been super helpful for us. We're, we're still really figuring out the best workflow for it, uh, but it has allowed us to do things like uh, rapidly generate b-roll that can be fit into an appropriate part and, and keep it interesting without having to do a lot of work and it's also been extremely helpful for us in animating some of the bits that you've seen in my ai agents video as well so we're building out new workflows for this at the moment and it's really something i'm excited to keep exploring in 2025. another key tool in my content creation workflow is a one called replicate which is what we use for my ai generated thumbnail so a lot of you may not realize, but probably on this video or on, I mean, you can go and look, I'll put up a couple of them on screen. One of the biggest pain in the butts as a creator is to have nice images for thumbnails. And I did this when I first started, I went to a studio um, in Dubai and I got all these photos taken. That was really big because that immediately elevated my channel from some of these hideous thumbnails that my competitors and other people in the space were doing. Uh, thumbnails are such an important part of the branding and, and the effectiveness of your content as well. Um, and so for me, it's been really helpful to not have to keep going and shooting but i used to have to sit here and, and go uh, and make all these stupid faces and, and now what we've done is if i put enough uh, photos of myself um like we, we take stills from videos and we use replicate to train our own image generation model on myself and so then my uh, my creative director sean when it comes to creating the thumbnails he can just write uh, a picture of liam holding his finger up like this and you can even look at some of my recent videos it, it's got a video of me going like this and I didn't have to take that photo. So it's, it's allowed us to get it the exact pose we want with this really nice lighting and everything and not have to worry about continually having to go to a studio or, or take a new thumbnail photos as well. So that's been a game changer for us. Um, and again, if you guys want me to break down how to actually do that, um, I can definitely cook up some resources for you guys on, uh, on how to do that as well. And the final AI tool that I use in my content creation workflow is Relevance AI for content repurposing. So uh, I take a lot of my YouTube transcripts, my, my whole workflow and, and content creation process primarily is based on ideation at the top. And then I'll create YouTube videos off of it and bake all of my, put a lot of work into structuring the ideas and putting information into that. And then from that, we can repurpose out of that for LinkedIn or Twitter content or for or for things in, on my email, etc. So I basically bake all of my brain into these YouTube videos. And then we use that information and say, hey, to a, an LLM, we're using Relevance AI, I can use... Pr the workflow is typically Promptmetheus first. So I'll go into Promptmetheus and write up a prompt and, and use it as my engineering environment to really dial in that prompt and get it converting the YouTube transcript into a, a say a tweet or something. And then what I'll do is take that prompt that I've written in Promptmetheus and put it into Relevance AI. And then I make a nice little tool out of it that I can either use myself or I can give to other members of my team so that they can take a, a transcript, put it in there and hit hit our repurpose or hit generate. And it's going to give them out the content they need and they can start scheduling it. So creating these content repurposing tools on Relevance AI has been a great way for me to uh, scale up my content production without having to do way more work. So I can just really focus on making good YouTube videos, really putting all of my, my brain power into, into structuring the ideas right and including the right research. And then that just gets sort of carried downstream to these different types of content that I put out on other platforms. So that's been 13 AI tools that help me make $480,000 a month. Um, maybe in a few months, I'll be making even more and I can do this again if I've made any changes. Um, but I'll leave links to all of them down below. Guys, again, no, no affiliate, no bullshit. I don't 
doesn't I don't need I don't need to make a, a few thousand dollars a month extra from affiliates um, thankfully <laughs> but yeah I appreciate you all for watching I hope this has been helpful um, there's really some bangers in there the content workflow has been uh, it does take a while to get to the point where you can implement all of those tools I will say um, but easy ones like Prompt Metheus and your AI automation agency Cursor if your devs are not already using it I'd be surprised if they're not um, and some of those ones like Airtable AI has been really really helpful for us in a number of ways so um, yeah, all there, they'll all be linked down below. If you are interested in starting an AI business and you're not entirely sure which one to start, I've got a really good video for beginners to get into the space on that um, so that you can start your own AI business because the space really is taken off um, and I'm pretty sure you don't need me to tell you that. But yeah, thanks so much for watching and I will see you on the next one.